So I'm up here in New York, I don't have my bike with me, but I wanted to go over some of my gear to show you guys how I make these YouTube videos. So this here is pretty much every single thing that I, I film with. This is like 90% of my equipment. The only thing you don't see here is my tripod, which I have another camera on right now, a camera that I borrowed to film this video. This is my main camera. This is a, this is a Samsung NX300 and it takes very good pictures, but I don't use it for pictures, I use it for video. So at full high definition, it's getting 60 frames per second. Now, what does that mean to you? Well, most YouTube videos that you watch are played at 30 frames per second. So the fact that this camera films at 60 frames per second means that I can slow things down to half speed and they still look good. So I can give you guys slow motion shots to show you how things are done. This camera can get more cinematic, dramatic shots because it has this long lens. So you can zoom in and get a really low depth of field where the object in the foreground is in focus and the objects in the background are out of focus. The only problem with this camera is it's really hard to hold stable. Uh, not only is it really hard to hold stable, but it's also really hard to focus on things. You can only focus on kind of a small spot and then if you rely on the autofocus, it's actually very slow to react. So you have a lot of focusing and unfocusing when using this. So this is, this is for a limited amount of applications and generally I only use this on a tripod. I would never hold this camera. It takes a lot of creativity to use a detachable lens camera for action shots. But I make do with it because I'm on a low budget. Again, this is an under $500 camera. It takes very good quality video, 60 frames per second at 1080p. But it's definitely not ideal for action shots. It takes a lot of creativity to use this. The other camera I use is the GoPro Hero. There's a lot of different models spanning all the way from the most basic one, which is this, all the way up to the Hero 4 Black, which is $500. This I got used on Amazon for $105 shipped. This actually can't come out of the casing, it's just always in the casing. That's the way the basic cheap Hero is. I leave the back off of it so that I can get better sound. I never use this in the water, I never use this in the rain, so I don't really care about the back being on it. Rarely do I have this camera attached to me or the bike. Normally, I have this camera set up someplace, either on a tripod or sitting somewhere. If I want to attach it to a tripod, I have this mount here. All cameras have this little hole here, but the GoPro, you need this adapter for it. And then I also have this little stand, which I can screw the camera into, and now I can set it up anywhere. What's good about the GoPro is that it has a very wide angle lens. So if I'm going to be jumping off a set of steps or something like that, I can put this right at the base of the steps and I can get everything in the shot. It's got a very wide angle. So the fact that the GoPro doesn't have a viewfinder on it by default really doesn't hold you back from using it. You can just point it at whatever you want and you get video. Now the downside to this GoPro Hero, the cheap one, is it only does 30 frames per second at 1080p. So if I'm giving you full HD video, I can't put it into slow motion. It becomes unreasonably choppy. In fact, recently I made the mistake of using this camera for an action shot. I had my friend riding a bike following me and doing a nose bonk over a rock. I slowed it down and then when I rendered the video, I realized it was unreasonably choppy. But we already got the shot, I used it. It just, it doesn't look good. Now when I do repair videos, sometimes I strap this to my head. I have both my hands free and anything that I see, you see. This is the head strap, you can go over your head, and then the GoPro has this little mount. All GoPro accessories attach like that. This goes on your head. If you point it kind of downwards, anything that you're looking at, the audience can see. So this is very useful for when I'm doing repair videos and when I need both my hands free. Okay, now the final camera that I want to show you that I use a lot is actually my iPhone. You might have an Android phone, you might have a different version of the iPhone that I have. It really doesn't matter. Most good quality smartphones these days have very, very good video. In fact, the iPhone can do 1080p at 60 frames a second. So I can get very similar video that I do on this Samsung with the iPhone. Now the iPhone has a few key differences from a camera like this. First of all, the field of view is very narrow. If I point this at something that's about 
15 feet away from me, I only get about 20% of what I can see with my eyes. It's very, it's almost like zoomed in when you point it at something. So I have to get this very far away from the subject that I'm trying to film, especially when I'm doing action shots. This allows me to attach the iPhone to a tripod. I just clip it in here, and now I have a tripod pod mount for it. Now obviously this would work for any phone. This would work for a Samsung Galaxy. This would work for other versions of the iPhone. Anything you have, this is gonna work for. Now most importantly, and the main reason I use my iPhone, is it actually has up to 240 frames per second slow motion video at 720p. Now 720p doesn't really look as good as 1080p. It's not full HD, but most of you guys are watching these videos either A, on a phone, or B, on a computer screen where it's only taking up a quarter of the screen. You don't always have it maximized. So 720p is good a lot of the time. If you're playing on a high definition computer screen or a television set, you're gonna notice the quality difference. But 240 frames per second is absurd. That, that is a super high frame rate. I can do super slow motions. You know, your phone might have similar settings. You can use your phone to record low budget mountain bike videos and they'll actually come out pretty good. In the next video, we're gonna go over some techniques. We're gonna go over how to set up the cameras, how to get the shot you know, how to make sure that everything comes out good and you can see what's going on. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.